a special envoy with a special mission. A delegation carrying a personal letter from South Korean President Moon Jae-in for North Korean Chairman Kim Jong-un flew to Pyongyang this morning. That's rare in itself, but there were also high hopes of a remarkable outcome. That much was clarified in statements from Chief Delegate Chung Yong and Seoul's presidential office. The primary mission was fairly obvious, to book a date for this month's agreed inter-Korean summit in Pyongyang. Chung performed a similar role in March when he led the same delegation to the north to smooth the way for what became the first summit between the Koreas in over a decade. But aside from that, this was just a one-day trip this time around, so the other goals were likely more about delivering messages than holding negotiations. We might say the second objective then, based on Chung's own words to reporters, was to discuss ways to completely denuclearize the Korean Peninsula and establish lasting peace. And that general statement was very much tied to the next two goals. Firstly, to help North Korea and the US return to dialogue. Chung said, we are always closely communicating with the United States. We are also sharing information related to the visit by the special delegation to North Korea and holding close discussions. We could interpret that as a way of saying he was acting as a mediator between Washington and Pyongyang after US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's planned recent trip to the North was cancelled. President Moon also held phone talks with his American counterpart Donald Trump last night for the first time in several weeks. The two leaders confirmed their mutual denuclearization and peace objectives and apparently agreed to meet on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly later this month. As an aside, it had been hoped North Korean Chairman Kim Jong-un would join them there, but there's no realistic expectation of that happening for now. Coming back to that phone conversation, according to his spokesman, President Moon insisted an improvement in the South-North Korean relationship and reduced tension on the Korean Peninsula will contribute to the complete denuclearization of the peninsula and establishment of permanent peace. And that brings us to the last, but far from least, of the objectives to improve inter-Korean ties in light of all of the above. Chung additionally said his aim was to discuss ways to execute April's inter-Korean cooperation promises so that a more concrete agreement can be achieved during the next Moon Kim summit. While critics here and in the US worry that giving too much to the North could weaken the denuclearization drive, the government continues to push for improved ties to fuel denuclearization and vice versa. And now the baton passes from Chung and his team to President Moon.